All right, guys, so the, the results are in. Uh, it's been a little bit over 30 days since I started the uh, AI rental rig showdown, <laughs> if you will, uh, where I'm doing a 4090 on Octospace uh, and a 4090 on uh, Salad AI um, and seeing who's going to outperform. Um, and uh, I think the results are pretty interesting, kind of went a little bit different uh, than I thought it would. Um, and it's actually getting pretty hot down here. As you can see, I got a little bit of a mess going on. Um, I'm about to do another build with uh, another 4090. The 4090s are kind of growing on me. They're pretty decently useful uh, for some of this AI work. So I want to show you what I'm up to. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I'm going to soon have to get these like AI mining rig rental, if you will, uh, deployments out into the shed uh, because my basement's getting a little bit hot. So um, with that being said, I want to show you guys the results um, and tell you what I'm up to. So let's jump on over into the computer and I'll show you that now. All right, guys. So I just real quick wanted to uh, do a refresher from the last video. So this is two RTX 4090s with uh, on systems that have the exact same specs, right? So same motherboard B550 Phantom Gaming 4 slash AC here, the exact same CPU, AMD Ryzen 7 5700X. Um, both of them have 32 gigs of, uh, it's actually DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM um, and a one terabyte hard drive, right? Um, and uh, both 4090s, obviously. Um, and so throughout this 30 day um, experiment, I have had the price on the Okta rental adjusted slightly. You know, there was one sad day during this process where I had to reboot my router. Um, and uh, it was a sad, sad day. I had about five rentals and, you know, they all got lost, obviously. But everything's fine. They recovered quickly, actually. And in, in under 24 hours, all those, uh, you know, Octospace rentals had jobs again. Salad, too. There's, it's been banned. So it's been from 26 cents up to, like, 29. So, you know, at 26 cents every 24 hours, um, it's been doing about $6.24 um, in revenue. Uh, so, you know, in order to calculate your profit, you'd have to check how much um, electric you've been using. And I just want to show you, um, this is the history of the sessions um, that have been um, uh, have been used throughout the Octospace rental period here that I've had this server up. So the first one was 11 days long. Uh, the next one was another 11 days long. Uh, I think they, so you can actually click on the session ID here and see what it was rented for, what image. Um, so these Jensen nodes seem to last quite a while. There's and there, there's a, there's a lot of render jobs too. So we have to, in between any of these like longer rental uh, periods, you know, these these render jobs are, are um, I don't know, they seem to be uh, there, there seem to be quite a few of them. And so right now it's on a five day job with uh, another Jensen node. So um, now let's jump on over into the um, some of the history of salad. Um, and, and see. So basically, this this uh, I have a the spreadsheet here. We're gonna go through. So I'll save that for a second from now. But let's take a look at Salad. All right, guys. So like I said in the beginning, uh, the results have been pretty interesting. Um, and so for Salad, uh, during the course of this 30-day experiment, um, there was not nearly as many container jobs available in the beginning of the experiment, and then. Um, you know, Salad kind of ramped up their like community engagement and they, I guess, got some partnerships of sorts um, and need more compute uh, and there's more containers available. Uh, and that was said and that definitely has been reflected in my experience. Um, and so during that process, though, um, I had a decent job uh, for a little bit. And then during that period, um, I was getting jobs that were like, you know, lasting very short periods of times and it was like cycling through jobs very quickly and then salad released an update that was a fix for that um but i had like kind of landed on a crappier job that wasn't using too much electric um but i kind of was stuck in it for a while and then uh finally i got a decent one um and like right around this stage is when uh things kind of ended up being like neck and neck so uh what i'd like to do now is jump on over into uh the spreadsheet and take a look at the results from the whole entire 30 days. Actually, it was exactly 29 days. Uh, sorry, my bad. So just about 30 days. Um, and I just want to point out firstly that um, we're going to need to take the uh, power draw with a little bit of a grain of salt because um, I actually had the Octa server on a PDU with a meter that had a couple other servers on it. 
um, and so it's pretty difficult to parse out the exact amount. So it's a little bit of an estimate on the octa side. Um, and I think on like day four or five, I got uh, I got salad. It's on its own kilowatt meter, so you could take the power usage of the salad server with a little bit less of a grain of salt. But again, it's just not it's not perfect. I didn't track the power perfectly. However, uh, the revenue um, is pretty exact. Uh, with one caveat, I, I I haven't exactly figured out the correct amount of like total fees that are taken um, on the uh, Octa side. Now, you know, when you go to cash out your salad, you're going to either buy, you know, whatever, you're going to spend like 220, I forget exactly what it is actually, but when you go to do your salad, let's just take a look real quick. You'll get like a, yeah, so you'll spend like $200 in Venmo. You'll get, this is what I've been doing, $200 Venmo, and then it costs 220. So uh, fees are not 100% accurately calculated in. So the most useful uh, way to look at this, in my opinion, is just sheer revenue right so this is like before fees and and just total revenue so um you're gonna see that you know drum roll it looks like octa one out in this uh 30 day experiment but um it is very important to note that uh towards the end once the salad job set in um they were really like just come look down here in the in the most recent days the beginning of june um we have like similar power usage uh, and we're, you know, generating uh, similar amounts of revenue, right? The different, th so there's a couple things to think about. So here are the takeaways, right? With Okta, you're going to be getting paid in crypto. Uh, with Salad, you're going to be getting paid in fiat. You can use Venmo or PayPal, or if you're heavy into gaming, you can get Steam cards or, you know, Fortnite V-Bucks, whatever. You can get all that cool stuff. Um, on the Okta side, if you're more familiar with Linux and Ubuntu or, you know, HiveOS, um, you can run idle mining scripts and you're getting paid in crypto. So if you're more steeped in the crypto ecosystem, like an, well, everybody knows, like Linux is just more stable for servers, right? So if you're on Salad, you're using Windows and Windows just will decide to do a friggin' update, you know, and just crash your shit and that sucks. Um, and so you have much more stability uh, in the Linux world than you do in the Windows world, in my personal opinion. So the other component that I think is pretty important, aside from getting paid out in crypto and being able to use Linux versus getting paid out in Fiat or PayPal and using Windows, is an Octa, you set your own price. Um, salad, you're kind of locked into whatever they pay you. Um, but there's been demand on both platforms. So I'm really liking the kind of the 4090 play. Uh, because, you know, I don't know, there's a, a lot of these newer altcoin ASICs, um, they're not doing so hot. It, it's not a very, like, robust investment. I always like to say diversify your hash, excuse me, diversify your hash. And, like, a 4090, you know, I'm still selling some of my 3000 series cards now. They're, like, five years old, right? And they have some value, whereas, like, a, you know, a dead ASIC that you got, you know, that's a paperweight status now because they get genned out in, like, a year, um... They're just not really that useful. So, you know, if you're like a small home miner like myself, um, you know, some of these 4090s, I think, have a little bit more resale value down the road and they're kind of useful. Um, and so, you know, just, just yeah, I don't give financial advice, but, you know, just keep that in the back of your head. So, you know, uh, you can then just buy crypto with your fiat uh, if you want to do that. And you can also, you know, hodl your Okta or you can swap it, you know, for something else, whatever you want to do. I actually personally like the Octospace project a lot. So, you know, I guess in summary, um, it looks like it kind of boiled down to timing. Um, Okta in this scenario was the winner, uh, but I think what the major takeaway is that there's kind of right now like two viable options that are pretty easy to get your hardware on um and if you just want the you know linux experience where you can you're, you're you can run idle mining scripts i made a video about that uh you can also integrate it with hive os you don't really have to worry about windows doing your updates you know and if you want to get paid in crypto you know octa is for you uh the demand is there um the revenue is there the power draw depends on what your hardware is getting used for um, and you can also plop a mining rig on there, but you know, before I jump onto that, uh, I would say if you have a gaming rig and it's got some solid compute behind it, nice CPU, good amount of Ram, a nice GPU, plop it on salad. There's a lot of container jobs right now. Um, and things seem to be going decent. You can earn a little bit of fiat. So, you know, really, I think they're just 
both about equally viable and it's just like a preference thing you know do you have one gaming pc that you want to throw on salad or do you have a couple servers that you want to deploy which brings me to my last point um i actually put two of <laughs> vanilla ass uh 3000 series mining rigs from the eth era um so you know just you know craptastic uh you know 13 pci 1x slot you know um one of those the h100 page what 10 pros the btc h110 pros ass rock boards anyway so i have uh i put like two mining rigs up on there one of them is on solar so you know when it gets used um it doesn't really you know I'm, I'm i'm paying for it with batteries and sunlight so um but what i did find is that you know i actually kind of lost interest in tracking it because it wasn't really getting rented all that much um so i just i don't think there's a big appetite uh at least that's been my experience uh for like just the lower grade just like a you know generic vanilla mining rig um i think people are much more interested in renting servers that have you know maybe they do have four six eight you know gpus but they want i think more ram fast ram um and a strong cpu and then you know gpus with with higher vrams are i think that's where the appetite is um and so but the thing that is cool about this is you can put so let's just say you have a mine you have good electric rate and you put your mining rig up on octa you can just have it run an idle mining script they have a lot of they have so many different dockerized images you could just literally deploy quai mining to you could i was i just have quai or chi mining to my pool when it's not getting rented um so you know that's an option so um yeah hopefully you guys got something out of this video uh depending on your hardware if you want to throw it up on octa space or if you want to throw some of your gaming pcs or your gpus over on salad i would say both are viable and towards the end here things kind of ended up being uh pretty pretty close to neck and neck um and uh yeah so if you guys have any questions just comment down below or pop into the discord um and i'll see you all around